After an absurdly long wait time, Wave 2 of the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass has finally been released. This brings over the Turnip Cup, which consists of New York Minute from Mario Kart Tour, Mario Circuit 3 from Super Mario Kart, Calamari Desert from Mario Kart 64, and Waluigi Pinball from Mario Kart DS. On top of those four, there is also the Propeller Cup, consisting of Sydney Sprint from Tour, Snowland from Super Circuit, Mushroom Gorge from Wii, and Sky High Sunday, which is actually the first track of the DLC to be completely original. Welcome to another episode of Level by Level. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the eight tracks I just listed and analyzing them based on how fun they are, but more importantly, how good I think they are as retro tracks. Except, of course, for Sky High Sunday, which will be analyzed as a new track. While Nitro tracks pretty much just have the job of being fun and creative, Retro tracks have the job of not only maintaining what made the original version of that track work, but also changing and adapting it to make the reintroduction of the track feel justified. So with that said, how do these eight tracks stack up to not only the rest of the tracks in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but also the first wave of the Booster Course Pass? Will these tracks be on the same level as those, or will these be overall a downgrade or upgrade? Well, as of right now, I don't know since I'm writing this introduction the day before the tracks drop, but I guess we'll figure that out during the rest of the video. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, but with that said, let's jump right into our first track of the Turnip Cup, New York Minute. Starting off, we have one of the very few tour tracks that I'm actually somewhat familiar with. For context, I've barely played Tor outside of its original release window, so most of the tracks from there are entirely new to me. This was one I knew though, so automatically I'd say this was a good choice to bring back. In the last wave, with the exception of Ninja Hideaway, the Tor tracks were given the special gimmick of changing the route you go on each lap. They do this because the tracks in Tor have several different versions, so this is a good way to combine them all for one single track. This worked pretty well in the two tracks from the first wave, so how well does it work in New York Minute? Well, the first lap will have you start the race by going to the right, which brings you into the small park area. I like the Goombas being here as obstacles, they can make drifting a bit trickier than it would have been otherwise. Continuing by the turn, we get our first real shortcut of the track, being a simple cut through this patch of grass. It can be somewhat tricky to get right on faster speeds, especially since immediately after it you have to take a sharp turn. Taking the path the normal way gives you a split path. If you just go straight, you'll stick to the ground, but you can also take a sharp left to get a glider ramp. That can be pretty helpful as it gives you access to the double item boxes on top of this vehicle, giving this path a good risk-reward balance, since the turn to get to this ramp can be somewhat tricky. The first lap ends by passing a few taxis. I do wish they moved around a bit as that'd make them a lot more interesting as obstacles. Seems like we got ourselves another Coconut Mall situation. Wait. They updated the track? Uh, yeah, they actually updated Coconut Mall's cars to move during the race now. Not in the same way as Mario Kart Wii, but I think I might even prefer the new way they move here as it's much more unpredictable and a lot funnier. So this is our first case in the level by level series where I'm going to be drastically moving up a level in the tier list. Oh yeah, we were talking about New York Minute. Lap 2 will have you go to the left at the start, which will take you through the park backwards. I will say that going backwards here is much less interesting than in Paris, since you only go backwards here for a few seconds. It's still a pretty cool gimmick though. This brings us back to the same split path of the glider from before, so let's jump right into lap 3. This begins the same as the second lap, though instead of going to the turn with the Goombas, you take a right under the bridge. This takes us back to the glider split, though this time the glider path is closed off and you have to go straight to an entirely new area. I really like how different this area looks and feels from the rest of the track. It's much darker than the outside due to it being in an enclosed space, making the final lap really stick with you. On 200cc, it can also be especially difficult to navigate through due to the harsh turns inside. But yeah, that's it for New York Minute. While certainly not the craziest track in the world, I mean we've seen several cities throughout the Mario Kart series, it was still pretty fun to race on. The tour gimmick of changing laps is also a great way to bring these tracks over in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe as it makes these not only stand out, but also feel pretty new. Oh, I totally forgot to mention the music. It's decent, it's not something I'll listen to outside of the game, especially since New Donk City is an infinitely better city song, but this works in the context of the game. So overall, I'm feeling a solid B tier for this track. While it doesn't do anything too exciting, there's really no problems with this either. You know what, let's go ahead and combine this tier list with the Wave 1 tracks. I'm going to place it just under Paris. I think Paris uses the tour gimmick just a little bit better. Let's hope our next track can keep up with this good pay- oh who am I kidding, you already know what the next track is. Keeping up with the trend of the second track of the wave sucking, we have SNES Mario Circuit 3. Where do I even begin? First off, this was not a track anyone wanted to see come back. Not only are the SNES tracks generally on the lamer side, but we already have a pretty much perfect Mario Circuit remake in the form of Mario Circuit GBA. Now yes, that is from Super Circuit, but this and the original Mario Circuits on the SNES shared the same general art style, so I think it's a fair comparison. Looking at the tracks side by side, Mario Circuit 3 is laughably bad. First off, this graphically looks terrible compared to Mario Circuit GBA. Now yes, the booster course pass obviously and sadly looks worse than the base game. However, I think this wave in particular did a better job of fitting in with the base game's look. Tracks like Waluigi Pinball and Snowland actually look pretty good. In general, they did a lot better in this wave. This is not an example of that. I mean, when I first saw this, I thought this looked like a Mario Kart Wii track remake. Back then, they barely changed the retro tracks at all, making any old track seem really out of place. I always hated that in the old game, so I'm happy they generally tried to fix this for Mario Kart. 
Hey, wait a minute. This is literally from Mario Kart Wii. Yeah, I didn't realize this, but they already remade Mario Circuit 3 for Wii. So why is this the one they decided to bring back for 8? Wouldn't it make much more sense to use... Oh, I don't know. One of the other three? I mean, really. This was just about the worst track choice they could have gone with. Heck, I would have been fine if we got Mario Circuit 1, since that's the first Mario Kart track ever, and it just feels sort of right to have it here. But instead, we just get the already redone Mario Circuit 3. Oh, and calling this a remake is a massive joke. Nothing about this stage has changed. Mario Circuit GBA has the really creative use of anti-gravity with having one of its turns raised in the air, along with the hidden glider ramp. If you want to look at another SNES track, though, Donut Plains 3 now allows you to drive underwater, opening up a ton of interesting cuts that were previously impossible. Mario Circuit 3 has nothing. I'm not asking for a major level layout change like a Mario Circuit GBA, but just something would have been nice. To be fair to the track, the layout itself isn't bad. The wall cut is fun enough, done better at Donut Plains, but whatever, and the really tight turn in the middle is kind of cool, but otherwise, this track sucks. The big question though, is it worse than Toad Circuit? Yes. Oh, and if you're asking why this isn't an F-tier, the layout itself is okay. F-tier is only for levels with literally nothing redeemable about them. Before we move on, the music might be my least favorite track theme in the game. Man, really making F-tier tempting, aren't we? It's like my least favorite remix of the original Circuit theme. Just listen to the Smash Bros. one instead. Alright, back to another good track, we have Calamari Desert for Mario Kart 64. This was always one I was a fairly big fan of. Its concept of a train in the desert was always just really creative. Since there aren't many more N64 tracks to pick, I'm certainly happy with her choice to bring this one over. This also just so happens to be one of the most changed tracks out of the entire DLC, which I of course really like to see. So starting off we have a big turn, though if you take it tight enough you will be able to go into the off-road and get access to a glider ramp, which obviously wasn't present in the original since the gliders were added in Mario Kart 7. On 200cc you can even use the glider to reach the second glider ramp on the track that'll take you over the train, which is pretty difficult, but also a lot of fun to perform. The two glider ramps take you over the train tracks, and in turn help you avoid the train, which is a great way to incorporate this new mechanic with the old obstacle. But then we see something I was definitely not expecting, the arrow indicator from the tour tracks. This was really weird to me, since Calamari Desert was just the standard three-lap course in Mario Kart 64, so why would this be here? Well, to my surprise, this also changes like the tour tracks, which I'm guessing may have been done here in order to implement some of the changes Tor made to the track. This first lap, though, keeps you following the standard route from the original, just simply going over the track. This last turn here has a few added ramps to make it a bit more exciting, since the original was a bit empty. There's even a ramp in the off-road for a little shortcut. Coming into lap 2, it starts the same as the first, though this time where the tour arrows were originally, a ramp has... Uh, somehow spawned, which lets you jump down onto the track. That's right, this lap actually makes us go on the track itself, even being able to pass by the train. This was a really good change. It makes the train gimmick so much more interesting, and it's also a route change unlike any of the other tracks from Tor. You don't even really pass the finish line to complete this lap, instead ending up inside the tunnel. That means lap 3 starts in an entirely new place, where you have to make it past the oncoming train without getting hit, which is quite hard due to how cramped it is. Eventually though, you do exit the tunnel and finish the lap the same as lap 1, though you can also stay on the tracks if you want. This track really surprised me. I was already looking forward to this track, and somehow this blew my expectations out of the water. This is absolutely how you do a retro track, taking the general layout from the original but mixing it up into something new with brand new mechanics. Honestly, as surprised as I am to say it, I think this deserves to be an S tier. Before release, I was thinking it'd be a low A, but no, this is fantastic. Playing on the original track now just feels so much less interesting, which just goes to show how much these changes improved the track. I guess the only criticism I do have is that the song here is only just okay, but it's not bad of course. Well with that said, let's see if the Turnip Cup is able to end on a high note here. Well, this is it, the fan favorite, Waluigi Pinball. Honestly, I'm a bit surprised we're seeing this track as early as we are. Definitely not surprised it made it in, but surprised to see it in Wave 2. The question is though, has this track remained intact? In the first wave, Coconut Mall was the big fan favorite making its return. However, I and a lot of other people felt like the remake was a bit of a downgrade from the original. Granted, they did update it, so now the two versions are much closer, but my point is, there was a good chance Nintendo could mess something up here. Luckily though, they didn't really change anything. However, that's a bit of a double-edged sword. First off, this is in my opinion the best looking track of both waves. This course is meant to be really bright and colorful, which works really well with the low effort approach they've had to making these graphics. Genuinely, if this was a base game track, I would probably say it looks as good as I could have wanted, which is not something I can say about most of these. Speaking of aesthetics, really happy that the item boxes still have unique sound effects like in the original. 
This is one of only four courses to have unique item box sounds, and of them, this is the only one based in the Mario series. It's a small touch, but one I think helps make this track stand out far above anything else. I was nervous that they'd get rid of this since it seems like such a small detail, but luckily for us, we got to keep the unique sounds. As for the layout, it's pretty much the same as Mario Kart 7's remake, which is the same as Mario Kart DS's version, just with the glider ramp at the start. After the tunnel, we have a small turn into a jump before getting to the portion where we get to drive near the pinballs. This section, however, has my first major criticism. As it is, it's still fairly fun to race on, dodging the pinballs on these weirdly sloped surfaces is a lot of fun, but something I always wanted from a remake of this track was to have this portion be an anti-gravity. The slopes are already pretty extreme here, so I always thought this would be a perfect candidate for it. Now, obviously, they didn't include this because none of the Booster Course past retro tracks have had anti-gravity, but I don't think that's a very valid excuse. Most of the other tracks really don't work well with anti-gravity, but this was an exception that I think they really should have put it in for. Moving past that, though, we abandon our pinball for a turn before going back next to it to enter into the table. Also, is it just me or does anyone else try to trick off this boost panel thinking it's a ramp? Just me. Okay, cool, cool, thanks guys. Anyways, we of course have the iconic pinball table itself, which as I've already said, looks phenomenal. Dodging the fast-moving pinballs is as exciting as ever, the bright colors just make it even more so. After that, we go back inside to finish the lap. Well, what can I say? It's Waluigi Pinball. Well, yeah, it didn't change much at all even though there was certainly room to, it didn't really require any changes anyway. Mario Circuit 3 having no changes sucks because that track is ancient and boring, but Waluigi Pinball was already one of the best tracks of all time. So with that said, I still think an S tier is more than fair. Still lower than Ninja Hideaway, but I do think it's slightly better than Calamari Desert, though it's very close. Oh wait, how did I forget? One of Waluigi Pinball's defining features is the absolute banger of a song. I mean, I listen to the DS version and the Smash remix all the time, so I was really looking forward to see what they would do here. Oh no. Okay, so for context, in Mario Kart DS, Waluigi Pinball and Wario Stadium both use the same song. However, only Wario Stadium was brought over to Mario Kart 8 originally, so they remixed the song to fit specifically that stage. However, now with Waluigi Pinball coming back, the great minds at Nintendo thought it'd be a good idea to just give Waluigi Pinball the same song. Now yes, this remix of the song is still very good, I just think it could have been great had it been made with Waluigi Pinball in mind. This also makes Waluigi Pinball the first course in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe to share a song with another track, which is really lame. The song is still good though, so it's not like it's going to hurt its placement on the ranking, it's just a bit disappointing. But with that said, we have finally finished the Turnip Cup. Now it's time to look at the second half of the DLC, the Propeller Cup. The Propeller Cup kicks off with another tour track, this time being Sydney Sprint. Just like the others, this one will also change depending on the lap. Starting off the race, you have to take a turn to the right. There's even a small corner you can cut with a mushroom. This will take you inside a small building which you have to glide out of. Upon landing and taking another turn, we have a sort of interesting spin on the whole going backwards gimmick. This time, you pretty much start the race going backwards, as you don't have access to these ramps, which you'll be able to use on the following laps. I think this is pretty interesting, as it makes the track more exciting as you go along. I also really like that the ramps aren't just solid blocks. You're able to go underneath some of them to get some coins, which is a neat touch. From there, we have a simple drive down a road with a few turns. I will say, this does go on for a bit long without having anything. I would have liked maybe a goober or two making an appearance here. After that though, we enter lap 2, which is drastically different from the first. You start by going left this time into another building. After jumping out, we have a few more simple turns on the road before getting into our next main attraction. This is a split road, a normal one and a sandy one that takes this turn much tighter. The sandy road of course requires a mushroom. <laughs> Just kidding, this doesn't require a mushroom despite the texturing difference from the main road. I knew to check this time because last time I said the shortcut in Paris required a mushroom due to the texture change even though it doesn't. So yeah, you all better keep an eye out for these tricky textures. Okay, but if you do really want to use a mushroom here though, then cutting this first turn is very fun but also pretty difficult. There are several rocks to run into and even if you make it past them, it's hard to make it back on the main road without hitting this small wall. I really like this cut. Its difficulty is definitely nice. After the split roads, we finally come back to the ramp section but this time we can actually go on them. I love jumping off of these. The boost panels combined with how close they are together just make this feel super fast paced and exciting. I like that the ramp is also pretty skinny too, making it require a bit of effort to stay on. After that, there's a simple little grassy segment before giving us another glider ramp. After that, we come back to the start from the backwards side, leading us into lap 3. This brings us back to that long and kind of boring road, just backwards this time. From there, we basically do the first lap again, but backwards, going through the ramps and gliding backwards into the starting building to finish the race. Overall, this is my favorite tour track besides Ninja Hideaway. The route changes, especially for lap 2, are much more unique than the others. So I think this belongs in A tier. It has a few boring bits, keeping it out of S, but they aren't really that bad. Oh, and how could I forget the music? This is the best new song here by far. It's super good. I'm gonna be listening to this one a lot. This was an absolutely fantastic way to start this cup. Let's hope the next track can keep up this pace. 
Snowland from Mario Kart Super Circuit, certainly not a track I was expecting to return. However, that's definitely not a bad thing. If you've played Super Circuit and Super Mario Kart before, you know that both games have their tracks be perfectly flat the entire time. This is due to hardware limitations, of course, but that's what makes these getting remakes exciting. It gives them a chance to really live up to their full potential. Unfortunately, Mario Circuit 3 sucks. Snowland, though, uses this opportunity to actually change the track. Who would have thunk it? First off, visually, this track looks pretty good. Not sure exactly what it is, but I'm just a fan of the art design on this one. Anyways, starting the race, we have a small little detail that I really love. The item boxes will actually fall from the sky during the countdown, which is just such a cute little thing that they didn't need to do. As the race begins, you'll immediately notice that the road is very slippery, which makes sense because there's ice on it. One other thing you'll notice is- What? Elevation? The track isn't completely flat. Mario Circuit 3, what's your excuse? Anyway, this just has a lot of turns on the slippery road. Sadly though, there aren't really many obstacles, so it does feel a bit plain at times. That is until you get to the ice-covered pond anyway, where you have to circle around the water without touching any penguins. The way they slide across the ground in just the right spot to make them pretty easy to run into makes them fantastic additions. After that, we get a little ramp to jump off of. Again, love to see some elevation changes. We then get to pass some penguins walking on the track, which isn't that big of an obstacle since they're fairly out of the way, but I still like seeing them here. We then have the option to go for one of two shortcuts to finish the race. One is the classic cut through the wall, and the other is a ramp to jump onto the ending bridge. Oh yeah, the starting line being on a bridge at all is an entirely new detail, which I really love to see. It's like a sort of lesser version of Ribbon Road, which also puts its track in an entirely new context. Back to Snowland though, I enjoy both of these cuts a lot, though I think the ramp is a bit more interesting due to it being more unique. Actually though, there is a shortcut I like a lot more, though it's only in 200cc. When I was first trying to beat the time trial ghost for this track, I was pretty far ahead of it going into lap 3, until out of nowhere he jump scares me by appearing from absolutely nowhere. Turns out, if you use a mushroom in just the right spot, you can jump over the Lakitu zone and make it to the icy pond. This is a really cool jump, and it's one that we don't get to see much of in Mario Kart 8. Ninja Hideaway had a similar jump in its time trial, so I really hope they continue to add interesting shortcuts like this. Honestly, I was originally going to put this track in B tier for being a bit on the boring side, but this shortcut combined with just how much of an improvement this is over the original track brings this up to being a low A tier. I mean, you can actually play on this map now without having a seizure. For whatever reason, the original track constantly shook the screen as you raced on it. Did no one on the development team get annoyed by this? I mean, I got a headache just by watching footage of it. But anyway, we of course have to end this segment by talking about the music. This one is really good. I already liked the original GBA version, so this was no surprise to me. This is probably my second favorite new song of the bunch. The Propeller Cup is doing pretty well for itself here. I think it's time we jump right into track number three, Mushroom Gorge. This is one of the most iconic tracks from Mario Kart Wii, so it was no surprise to me at all to see it make its way over. I've always found this track to be one of the more difficult ones in the series, simply due to how jumping off mushrooms can be pretty unpredictable. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Starting off the race, we have a simple turn and, wait just a second, right away we get a really fun shortcut where we have to use a mushroom off the map to land on a bouncy mushroom off screen to cut this corner. This is a ton of fun to perform, especially since there's quite a bit of risk going for it. It was in the original track too, but I never knew that that was what it was supposed to do because anytime I saw a time trial on Mushroom Gorge, it looks something like this. Sadly, this cannot be done in the Mario Kart 8 version. I know, shocking. Anyways, after that, we get another mushroom bounce and then a split path. You can go to the left if you have a severe fear of mushrooms, but everyone I know just goes straight. This introduces us to the green mushrooms, which won't bounce the player at all. That brings us to Mushroom Gorge's defining feature, the Mushroom Cave. What I really like about this course in particular is how it builds up to this big event, starting you with one mushroom, then bringing you to a small group, before bringing you to the horde. It honestly feels like their design philosophy for their standard Mario games. There are several ways to tackle this, and like I said, it could be quite tricky, as bouncing off the mushrooms can send you in really weird directions. Personally, I always like going for the blue mushroom, which will let you glide across the rest of the cave. But you can also stay near the ground by going to the right, or continue up high by going far left. This is definitely one of my favorite portions of any track. It's just a blast to go through here. The track then ends with another simple turn with a few goom- The track then ends with another simple turn with a few Goombas for good measure. But uh-oh, we have another 200cc shortcut, which is the reintroduction of the gap jump. This was present in Mario Kart Wii due to the game's weird physics, but it's possible here due to the high speed. This is pretty difficult to do, and the risk or reward is very high, as if you make it, you're gonna be saving a lot of time, but if you miss it, you're gonna be falling off and losing the race. So overall, another banger of a track for the propeller. Cup. I think I'm also going to have to put this in A tier just below Sydney Sprint. The only thing holding this back for me is that it's not the most creative gimmick and there weren't really any changes here, but they definitely did this gimmick of the bouncy mushrooms as best as they possibly could. Oh, and this song is fantastic too. Honestly, it sounds like nearly the exact same as the Wii version for me. Not like that's a bad thing though, Mushroom Gorge's theme has always been very good and this is just straight up an improvement. But that leaves us with just one more track, the only track to not be a retro track. Let's take a look at Sky High Sunday.
I'm gonna be honest guys, this one is a really, really weird one for me. First off, there are two big things about this that help it stand out besides just being the only new track. First off, the entire track is in anti-gravity, being also the only track in the booster course pass to have anti-gravity at all. Secondly, and what I found to be more important of the two things, this is one of the few tracks to be given underwater physics, the other two being the two F-Zero tracks. What does that mean? Well basically, your cart will fall much slower, and if you hold back, you'll basically be able to glide for however long you want. While I like this a lot in those tracks, it feels really strange here, and that's kind of a good way to describe this as a whole. It just feels really weird. Let's look at the layout. First off, we start with a glider ramp where we can go through an ice cream cone to get a box. The hole is a bit small though, and since people may be scrambling to get this, it might be a bit of a tight squeeze, which is nice. Upon landing, we have to ride up a staircase and, uh, the rails are anti-gravity boosters? There's absolutely no indication that they would do that, and it looks really strange. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. I can forgive the off-roads that aren't actually off-roads, but this just feels wrong. After we pass by the stores though, we get to ride up a steep slope with a split path. They're basically the same thing, but just mirrored, so I like that you can mix up whichever one you go for. What I don't like though, is that you literally cannot see where you are landing due to the horrible camera angle. Granted, you are pretty unlikely to fall off, but it just feels very unnecessary for the camera to be like this. I will say though that this section with the jumps does use the water gravity well once you get used to it. It's pretty fun to jump across all these ramps. You could even go underneath them, though I genuinely do not know why you would ever choose to. It just sort of feels like a nice safety in case you fall off. Finally, the two paths come back together on this really fun turn. It's sloped pretty steep and there's a lot of room to fall off, especially on 200cc. Finally, the lap wraps up with a few more jumps to the finish line. So in the end, this is certainly a unique course. I feel like it's one I need to get used to. The others seem to click right away for me, except you, for me as being pretty good. This one though, I think is gonna take me some time. One thing I can't excuse though, is the terrible camera at this part. It's genuinely awful and it brings this track down a lot. I think I'm going to put this in C tier for now. I could definitely see this being in B tier in the future, but the weird physics just didn't make this much fun for me to play on at first. If they patch the camera thing, this will definitely move up. That's the main thing holding this back from B tier. Oh, and as for the song, it's pretty solid. Definitely the weakest of this cup, but it's better than Mario Circuit 3 at least. Man, Toad Circuit must be so happy I have a new punching bag, huh? So as the first new course, it's a bit weak, but the implication that we're going to be getting even more new tracks is really what makes this exciting. But anyways, that's it for this video. Do you all think Nintendo changing the boost panel on Mario Circuit 3 from being an arrow to being a simple box is enough of an update to make it the best track of the past? Let me know in the comments. Before I go though, let's compare the first two waves. While none of this wave's tracks reach the high of Ninja Hideaway, and this wave's low point is lower than wave 1, the rest of the tracks are really solid. I mean, we had two S tiers and three A tiers. That's really good. So in my opinion, this is definitely a better wave overall than the first. With that said, here's how all the tracks compare on the complete level by level tier list. Really looking forward to see what they do with wave 3. Let's hope whatever course is the second one doesn't end up being a D tier 2 though. But anyways, dry bones for smash and I'll see you guys next time.